Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about how we can uh, create this kind of sliding effect and uh, I would really like to particularly talk about this shadow over here, uh, how I created this shadow and then in, a, in the later tutorial I'm going to be uh, going over creating all sort of shadows that you can using CSS. So, all right, let's get started. As always, uh, I will go to kotus.com slash codity or create a new prototype. Uh, so for this matter, I'm going to switch to this layout. So I, I will add a container div. And within my container, I put a, a div for my image and then another div for my info, which is, so this, this is going to be my image div and the underneath one is going to be my information, right? Um, and then switching to my IMG, uh, to my CSS, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to say container div, uh, which I refer to these two divs within my container. I will give them a width of 300 pixel height of 400 pixel and then I will position them absolute so that I can freely move them so in this particular case I want to center them so I will do top 50% left 50% and then translate minus 50% and minus 50% right nothing is visible right now I am going to give my body a background of maybe light blue and then just to visualize how they look I will give a background of white right so this one ended up over here and the reason for that is that I obviously forgot to, uh, to transform here right another thing I want to do is give it a border radius of maybe 5 pixel so there is this very nice kind of curvy border uh, and then I will basically remove the background and then I will choose my first div using the first child selector over here so basically I either can use the IMG class or in this case I just wanted to show how you can use this selector first child so that you can select the first div and then here I will give the background background image a URL and then I will go back here you know I will get the image that we have over here just copy and paste it uh, so I just searched for it uh, over Google don't use these you know in your uh, you know projects uh, your commercial projects uh, unless you got the permission from the owner so uh, I will so I have defined my background image and then I will give my background position to be center so I basically center the image and then I will give the size to be cover so it kind of covers the whole area uh, and then uh, this is my first child maybe just to have the cursor pointer I will give it a cursor pointer so uh, that uh, you can kind of click on it I'm not quite sure why cursor pointer does not work but that's not important at this moment we will get back to it and then for the other one uh, for my second uh, div or in this case it's my last div within the container I will choose the last child selector right give it a background of white so you can see it gets white and uh, I guess that's pretty much it right the most important thing is that obviously this panel is behind the first one but due to the fact that the order that I defined my HTML this one is after this it always uh, gets in front so what I need to do is basically define Z index to be uh, 1 so it comes up and then I guess if I define cursor pointer 
it will show up and the reason why it wasn't showing up because the, the second the second div or last div was over it right so now we have our image and we have our div which is behind it uh, in order to animate it so that when you click on it you you get this kind of animation over here what I'm gonna do obviously I need to use JavaScript I am going to add jQuery because that's just easy for now uh, and then I will say when my document is ready then I will pass it a function and within that function I will just choose my container using its class and then say click uh, I will pass a function and then what I would like to do is that I want to make sure that I uh, give I just add class maybe I don't know maybe slide let's let's just name it slide so what I'm saying is that when I click on my container which basically means that if I click on this um, I want my container to have a class slide right and then in my CSS I will say when my container had class slides assigned and then my first child which refers to this image what I'm going to do is I'm going to use transform and then translate I will want to preserve my uh, translate in the x-axis so I will put 50% I don't want that to change but then on the y-axis I would like to go 40 pixel up I'm using calc function in CSS so again I want to preserve my 50% on like y-axis but then I want to subtract 40 pixel from it right and I will just copy this and paste it for my last child and for my last child what I want to do is that I want to go 40 pixel down on the y-axis so this basically means that I go 40 pixel up and then my last child which is the white div underneath this it comes down so if I click right now you can see what happens so this one goes 40 pixel up and underneath goes 40 pixel down right just to make it comfortable I will just change the add class to toggle class so what happens is that when I click on the container it toggle the class uh, slide over my container so this adds the class and when I click again it removes it right the other thing is I want to scale the underlying div to be something bigger so I not only translate it 40 pixel down I also scale it to 1.1 so now when I click you kind of see how it looks now in order to make it so that it looks like animated I'm, I want to make sure that I add a transition a CSS property to both divs because they need to have uh, the same timing so I would say transition and obviously as you can see I'm I'm, I'm using transform so I'll say transition transform and then zero point maybe five seconds so now you'll see that when I click on it you have this cool kind of animation All right I can use uh, you know timing functions or easing functions uh, so by default it's ease out that's pretty much what it is but then ease out pretty much means that when you, when the animation starts uh, it starts with like the speed that it has and then it slows down so what I want to do is that I want to start my animation so I have a slow start and then it goes to the speed that it needs to be like ease in so you can see it has this kind of cool sliding right so if I change this to maybe 0 0.4 you kind of feel it even more right so now back to the shadow that I was talking about so usually in CSS when you want to add a shadow you use box shadow and uh, I don't want to have any shadow on my x-axis so 0 and then 36 pixel on y-axis you can see that it added this and by default obviously it's black and then the the, the third uh, you know parameter or value that I add on my back box shadow is the blurriness right so I'm gonna give it like maybe 10 pixel so as you can see it added 10 pixel blur to this and then uh, I can I can define the color of it using RGBA so 0 
for R, 0 for G, 0 for B, and then I want the opacity to be 0 0.2, right? So you can see I added the shadow, there is no uh, shadow on my X axis, there is like 36 pixel on Y axis that comes down, and then 10 pixel blurriness, and I define the color using RGBA, so R0, G0, B0, which effectively means that I'm using black color, right? And if you want to use white, for example, it's going to be 20, 255, 255, 255. And then I want the alpha channel to be 0 0.2, effectively adding, uh, you know, transparency. So the, the cool thing about this shadow over here, as you can see, is that there is this, like, in terms of sizing, it's a smaller, actually, than the width of its, you know, container that is assigned. So there is another CSS property that you can define in box shadow, which is called spread, right? And you can use minus values in spread. So if I, let's say I choose 10 pixel, you can see that it is spread at the shadow 10 pixel. But if I use minus 10 pixel, you can see how effectively it made it smaller, right? Maybe I can use minus 20, right? And this is pretty much exactly the look that we got over here. So this is one of the ways that you can kind of get this kind of feeling that there is a dis using the box shadow, that there is a distance between this uh, div or box with the underlying surface, which is your viewport, right? So right now you can, you know, make it even look more natural, right? So yeah, that's about it. Uh, in another tutorial, I will go over, uh, you know, how to create different box shadows. So I hope you like this tutorial. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so that you get notified on my next tutorials. And if you like this tutorial, please go ahead and like and share this so that you can help me continue building these cool tutorials. And I hope you a very good day or night. Bye.